for as long as I can remember, I've always hated taking out the trash. And if you're like me, you hate doing anything more than once. So I wanted to automate it. And I had this crazy idea to mutilate my trash can and have it take its own self out. Now the only thing left is to figure out if it's gonna work or not. So let's get to it. So here's the plan. I have this second trash can here that came with my house. And lucky for me it did because it's not a state issued trash can. Because state issued trash cans you can't modify. If you modify them you'll get a big fine. There'll be a bunch of issues and stuff. So this trash can is literally mine. So I can do whatever I want with it. So the plan is to just stuff a bunch of electronics in here and have it drive itself when the garbage truck comes every week. Sounds easy enough. But there's a little catch because the garbage truck comes very early in the morning and I'm normally asleep. So I'm not about to sit there by the window and wait for the garbage truck to come to signal the trash can to move out, you know? So I wanna automate everything. So I'm gonna make an AI that can visually see when a garbage truck is crossing my house. And when it sees that, it's gonna trigger the garage door to open. And then after the garage door is completely open, it'll trigger the trash can to move out to the curb and stop at the curb. So the garbage truck can pick it up. And that's the gist of the project. Sounds easy, right? <laughs> easy. So these are the electronics that we're gonna use for this project. We'll start off with the most important piece, the wheel. This is an electric scooter hub motor. It's rated for either 24 volts, 36 volts, and 48 volts. And now the power that I'll be using to control that hub motor is my 36 volt lithium ion battery. This battery also has a BMS system inside, a battery management system. So I'll literally be able to charge it straight from the charger without needing a balance or anything like that. Now to control the speed, the power, and even the braking system that I don't have set up, and to be the link between the microcontroller that we'll shortly introduce, we needed some type of controller. Now we could have went the classic route, simple e-bike controllers. But you see how many crazy wires this has. We could have hacked into these wires, but it was just too much going on and it was too complicated. So instead I'm throwing this away. And then we're gonna be using a driver board. The driver board is way less expensive than those other controllers as well, so you'll also be saving money if you went the driver board route. And last, but definitely not least, the thing that I'll be wrapping up all these electronics to put them all together is our Raspberry Pi Zero W. So we'll be using one of the PWM GPIO pins to send the speed signal from the microcontroller to the driver hub, to the hub motor. <laughs> the best part about all this is that our controller also has a five volt output. Now this is very handy because we can put that five volt output straight to the Raspberry Pi to power up the Raspberry Pi, all using the 36 volt motor that's also controlling the hub motor. So we don't have to need any other battery other than that 36 volt battery. And now to keep everything contained in one container, I went down to the kitchen and got one of my wife's snapware airtight containers that she uses for her food. Don't tell her, but this is gonna contain everything inside of this one container. And I wanna have it in one container rather than gluing it to the trash can or anything like that. Cause I may need to take it out, put it back in, charge the battery. There's a lot of things that I need to do with the other electronics. And then I don't know if you notice in here, there's already this blue tack putty. This tack putty is from Fabric Castile. We can put this on our electronics and then just push it down. And then you just have basically full tape with nothing. No, see how, see how hard I'm moving up. And it's sticking, not even stick that one hard. So I'm gonna put all of them inside of there. Now if you notice, everything's in there and it's steady. If you look in the back, you can see the tack putty on everything. And yeah, that wraps up the electronics. So let's move on. The hardest part of this project was installing the tire because I didn't know how I was gonna keep it stable with that plastic body of the trash can. It would be easier if it was a metal casing or something like that. But what I ended up doing was installing an aluminum bar and then sliding that through the trash can. And then in the middle of that aluminum bar, I cut a hole for where the screw's gonna go to connect to the tire fork. After that, I cut a hole in the bottom of the can where the tire would sit. 
I use a drill press so that I can make screw threads for the tire fork. Now that wraps up all the electronics and the hardware. Now let's talk about the software. As I mentioned earlier, y'all know that I'm extremely lazy to trigger the trash can every week manually. It's just not gonna happen. So we're gonna be leveraging machine learning to detect when the garbage truck actually passes my house outside of here. The area of machine learning that we'll be using to do this is called object detection. We'll rush through all these steps that it took to build my model because this is a topic for like a whole nother video. It takes a long time. But if you'd like to see this in the future of how to build your own object detector on a microcontroller like the Jetson Xavier, let me know in the comments below. Speaking of Jetson, we'll be using our Jetson Xavier NX that Nvidia so kindly sent me. Thank you, NVIDIA. And this will be the main brain of the project. Now I use the Jetson Nano on a few other projects and I can definitely say that the Xavier NX is so much faster than the Nano. And I'm definitely gonna put it to use for this project. Now that we have our machine learning stuff set up, we're gonna stick a webcam into the Jetson Nano and then position it right by the window to watch for garden trucks. Before testing everything out, I also needed a way to open the garage door. Originally I was gonna do this with an Arduino by shorting out the pins on the garage door opener. But as I was testing this, I noticed that my garage door opener was Wi-Fi, which I had no idea it was. So I abandoned shorting out the wires and then just connected the app. I also realized this app also has a Home Assistant integration, which is perfect for me because I have Home Assistant. And Home Assistant opens up a REST API for us to use. Sadly, I saved testing until the last minute. This was the day before the trash people came. So yeah, testing went very wrong. For some reason, I thought the friction on the ground would stop the tire after it stops moving. I had to stop it right on the curb and I could time it up. But I didn't realize I was actually on a hill, so the tire just kept going. All of this testing made me kind of depressed because I had no more time left as the trash people were coming in the morning. The other issue is that I'm only using one tire with no type of direction, so I can't actually turn it. Uh, and it seems like it was off balance because it was always moving to the right. But that was the lesser issue I was worried about because that's something I can tweak a tiny bit. Um, so I saved that for last. But before I knew, night befell me and time was pretty much up. So the only thing I could do was head to bed and try again next week. Fast forward to the weekend, I installed a brake system. My hub motor doesn't have a built-in automatic brake. Instead, it has the traditional drum brake that requires a manual pull. I had to pick up some wire rope from the big orange box and I measured how much tension I would need in order to activate this drum brake. I then got a servo that will be able to activate this brake according to the tension that I measured. The servo motor that I got was an 8 volt, 270 degree, 60 kilogram servo motor from Animus. That is a torque strength of 130 pounds per centimeter. Absolutely crazy. So as I mentioned a few seconds ago, this servo is eight volts. Now, of course, it could take less volts as it's a servo motor, but even the bottom voltage of the motor is six volts. This means that my Raspberry Pi won't be able to output enough volts, let alone amps to move this motor. So I ended up splicing the 36 volt Li-Ion battery into three different sections. One that will still be connected to the motor controller for the wheel hub, another for my Raspberry Pi, and another for the servo motor. This is 36 volts though, so I attached a step down converter that will step down to 36 volts to 5.2 volts for my Raspberry Pi, and another step down that will convert it down to 8 volts for my servo motor. We also upgraded our Raspberry Pi Zero to a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and hooked the servo motor to the Raspberry Pi to be controlled with pulse width modulation. Only thing left was connecting everything back up to the trash can and then testing it out. When the morning came, I set everything up and just waited and waited and waited. Then, they came. Here it comes. They go to the trash can. All right, let's see. The detection object. Oh, it detected it. There it is. And now you're here downstairs. So you hear the garage opening. And then, it's gonna wait 10 seconds for the garage to be completely open. And then it's gonna go. <laughs> That's perfect. It's perfect. Wow, it worked flawlessly. Only it wasn't the trash people. You see that? 
Yeah. <laughs> I thought y'all the trash me. I think y'all the trash me though. Y'all just like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I reset everything, brought the trash can back inside, and waited again until the trash people came. Then I waited and waited and waited. Then they came. So here comes the truck coming. Let's see if the camera detected. There it goes, it's detecting it. So now if we go downstairs, the garage should be opening up. And then it's gonna wait 10 seconds. Then it's gonna go. Yeah. And then it should stop. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. Wow, that worked flawlessly. Only issue is that the trash guy literally skipped my trash can. I had to end up chasing him down. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, y'all, excuse me. I gotta pick up this one too. Oh, thanks. So now they're picking it up. This is gonna go up. And we're good. Success. All right, thanks. <laughs> now we're done. I had way too much fun with this project. I learned a crazy amount. The only error in my opinion was human error. And all of the machines worked perfectly. I guess since the garbage can wasn't completely on the street, the truck guy didn't think that it was full, so he just left it. I don't know, I don't know, but I'm still happy that everything else turned out great. It worked perfectly in my mind. I don't know, but I'm still happy how everything turned out. What can I say? Everything that I've used in this project will be linked below. And it'll mean a ton if you use it because these links are affiliate links and they help the channel grow because these tools do get pretty expensive. Speaking of expensive, I'm happy to announce my first Patreon. Woo! Mick Shane, thank you so much. Mick Shane is awesome and has helped fund this project through his patronage. And if you would like to join Shane and help me with these projects in the future, the Patreon link will be linked below as well. Every dollar that comes to this channel will be reinvested right back into the channel because I actually have a full-time job outside of YouTube, of course, so I don't actually pocket this money. One last update, my channel is about to hit 2,000 subscribers. So please hit that like button, comment anything you want down below, and make sure you subscribe, as all of these will signal the YouTube algorithm to push this video a little further. As always, I'll see y'all soon and continue to embrace the spark.